daughter, Morvin Stern. I was born in the Bronx, New York, in December 1941. I've always felt responsible for World War II. The first thing I remember liking that liked me back was food. I had a bad puberty. It lasted 17 years. I'm a high school graduate. I went to art school. My entrance exam was on a book of matches. I decided to move out of the house when I was 24. My mother still refers to this as the time I ran away from home. Eventually, I ran to Minneapolis, where it's cold, and I figured I'd keep better. Now I'm back in Manhattan. New York, this is your last chance. your slur. <laughs> well, there's a lady down here says she's your sister, but you don't look anything like her. Don't remind me. I send her up. Okay, but I'm not responsible. <laughs> Rhoda? Yes. Rhoda, I'm over here. Oh, there you are. Rhoda, oh, oh, no, it's all right. What are you doing? No, it's not heavy. Oh, Brenda. Oh, look at this. What a... Oh, it's a great place. Oh, hey, why did you do all this? <laughs> she made it sign. <laughs> Balloons yeah. and everything. I can't believe I you're really know. here. <laughs> God, you that looks so gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me everything. I want to hear it all. What's going on with your life? Oh, you know, the same things. Mother problem, weight problem, date problem. That's terrific. You don't have a job problem. Hey, that's right. I got promoted at the bank. Now I'm a teller. Hey, there you go. That's yeah. terrific. That's terrific. And the best thing about being a bank teller is that your legs don't show. <laughs> Why do I get this feeling I'm looking in an old mirror? Oh. <laughs> Take it from one who went through it and survived. Things are going to get better. Yeah? Oh, I promise. So, so tell me, what's been going on in your life? Oh, let's see where to start. Um, nothing. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't mind doing nothing if I looked as thin as you doing it. Thanks, but this does not come easy. I mean, Brenda, one bite of a Sara Lee anything. I inflate like a rubber rag. <laughs> Sara Lee. <laughs> Are you familiar with their frozen cheesecake? <laughs> An old friend. <laughs> hey, come on, I'll show you around the rest of my place. It'll take our minds off food. <laughs> this is my kitchen. <laughs> Who is it? It's only me. Uh, just a minute. Are you ready for Mom? I mean, it should be interesting. I've never experienced Ma and jet lag at the same time. <laughs> okay, here we go. Rhoda. <laughs> oh, oh, so how come you're not wearing a bra? <laughs> Ma, I'm 33 years old. Well, all the more reason. <laughs> If you were 10, you wouldn't need one. <laughs> Brenda, I'm very worried about it. <laughs> it's not bad enough that you live in this neighborhood, but there's a drunk sleeping in your lobby. You ought to tell the doorman. That is the doorman. <laughs> well, anyway, it's nice to be with my two girls, Rhoda Faye and Brenda Faye. <laughs> <laughs> You know, Ma, I always wondered, if you like the name Faye so much, why don't you just name one of us Faye? I didn't like it that much. <laughs> Listen, I know you have a lot of things to do, so you can see the family at your convenience. Well, 6.30 tomorrow. <laughs> Ma, gee, tomorrow? And listen, you don't have to give me an answer now. I mean, it's not that important. Okay. Just let me know in enough time to cancel the caterers. <laughs> Rhoda, I wrote it some guy for you. Yeah, who knows I'm here? Hello. Yes, it is. Who's this? Steven? I know a lot of Steven. Steven who? Steven Schlossberg? <laughs> I know a lot of Steven Schlossberg. 
This gives you some idea of the kind of life I've had. <laughs> Stephen, where did you get my number? What do you mean she told you not to tell? <laughs> I'm sorry, Stephen. I cannot go out with you. No. Uh, no, I don't care that you're 6'2". Um, Stephen, I can't go out with you unless you tell me exactly who it was that gave you this number. You'll like him. <laughs> He's got long hair. And this time, don't be so choosy. If I was as choosy as you, you'd only be three years old now. <laughs> Stephen, listen, if you'd like to stay out till one or two showing my daughter a good time, it's okay. Yeah, but don't worry about getting into the office a little late. No, I'm sure my husband wouldn't dock you. <laughs> He'll be here at 7.30. Mm -hmm. You're lucky I didn't go to Acapulco on my vacation. By coming here, I saved you Stephen Schlossberg's airfare. <laughs> It's amazing. Do you realize you've been putting on makeup for an hour and you don't look like you have any makeup on? Yeah, that's the whole point. It's a natural look. The more you put on, the more natural you look. How do you know when to stop? When you look like Alice Cooper, you went too far. There. I feel I ought to sign this or something. <laughs> so, Brent, you sure you're going to be okay tonight? Sure, I babysit every Saturday night. Yeah? What happens when you have a date? So far, that problem hasn't come up. <laughs> Brenda, come on. Believe me, it's all going to work out. Now, listen, tell me. Where are you babysitting tonight? Maybe Stephen and I can uh, give you a lift. I don't need it. The father brings the kid over here. Oh. Hey, wait till you meet him. Really sexy. Yeah? He's the kind of guy, you know, under his, under his suit, there's this great chest with a medallion on it. <laughs> I've been telling him a lot about you. I think he'd go out with you. Thanks a lot for the offer. I appreciate it, Bryn. But I draw the line at married guys with medallions. Double uh, line for married with children. <laughs> uh, hey, he's divorced. No line. <laughs> I think you'll like him. He's really nice. Good sense of humor, gentle, sensitive. Yeah, what does he do? He demolishes buildings. <laughs> he owns a wrecking company. Good for him. I guess he looks at New York as one big job. <laughs> Thanks a lot, kid. But I already have a date. Oh, at least uh, Schlossberg is punctual. Steve? <laughs> He's for me. Hey, Donnie. Oh. Steve. No. Oh. Hey, don't run away from me. Now, you gotta face up to this, Donnie. You're not too old to need a babysitter. I don't need a babysitter. Oh, look. I'm going out tonight, and I want to have a great time. Now, if I'm worried about what you're doing every single minute, I won't be having a great time, will I? You understand? I don't need a babysitter. Oh, talk to him, will you? Uh, hey, Donnie, that's uh, Sesame Street. It's a really great show, isn't it? Hey, you don't have to talk down to him. <laughs> what do you think of Meet the Press, Don? <laughs> I gotta tell you something. You need a babysitter, and you got no choice. That's the way to talk to him. <laughs> Hello, Linda? <laughs> yeah, listen, I'm on my way over there now, and we're late, so why don't you meet me down in the street? That's silly. What could happen to you down in the street? <laughs> uh-huh. 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 Okay, I'll meet you in the lobby. The lobby, too? Isn't he, uh... Yes, Brenda, he is. Uh, that is an exciting man. That's a very exciting man there on the phone. I wonder what's wrong with him. Hey, you want me to fix you up? Brenda, look, if I wanted to go out with him, I would just... Ask him myself. Wow. <laughs> Good choice of word. Okay. okay, okay. Hello. Hi. I'm uh, Brenda's sister, Rhoda. Just visiting here. I'm from Minneapolis. Oh, yeah, I could tell from your accent. <laughs> <laughs> you got 
a good ear there. I mean, uh, most people think I'm from St. Paul. <laughs> You want to go out sometime? Uh, sure. Wow. Uh, the Knicks are back in town tomorrow. Do you want to go? Tomorrow? Yeah. Uh, sure. Yes, tomorrow's perfect. I, I'm not doing anything tomorrow. Tell Ma to cancel the caterers. Hey. I'll pick you up at 7. Good. Okay, Donnie. I'll see you later. And listen, if you have to go, uh, be sure you lift up the seat. Thank you. Uh, hey, uh, what's your name? Joe. Okay. Wow, you are fantastic. I am really going to learn a lot from you. Uh, Brenda, I mean, I, Rhoda Morgenstern, just asked this terrific guy out, and uh, he said sure. Oh, I thank you, Ms. Magazine. I never could have done it without you. Joe, I had the greatest time. No, me too. I mean, I, I haven't felt this way. Yeah, me too. Me too. I mean, uh, I guess we just saw We sure did. Yeah. And we haven't even... Uh... I know. <laughs> Look. Since you asked me out first, I wanted to ask you this before you beat me to it. Yeah? How long are you going to be in town? Twelve more days, which gives us a lot of time to see each other, if you'd like to go out with me. You did it again. You beat me to it. Sorry. <laughs> okay, I'll call you tomorrow and we'll, we'll set it up. Huh? Great, that's terrific. Good night. Got my kid. <laughs> Hello, Roy. Yeah, this is Rhoda Morgenstern. Now, Roy, the reason I'm not at work this morning is because I'm still in New York. I have this terrible cold. Yeah, and I'm all stopped up. Now, the doctor said if I fly with a change in cabin pressure, something very embarrassing could happen. <laughs> That's right, Roy. Never too sick to make a joke. Bye-bye. <laughs> yeah, oh, and thank you for your concern. But I don't really need it, because I just bought myself another week in New York. <laughs> I know. Wait till I tell Joe, oh, Brenda. That's great. Yeah. Hey, listen, how do I sound? Was I nasal enough? Are you kidding? You sounded so real, I think I'm catching it. <laughs> It was the robe, kid. Really, I could never have sounded that sick without the feel of flannel. <laughs> yeah? Uh, yeah, this is Carlton, your doorman. I got a short, red-headed woman down here. Says she's your mother. Sh should I send her up? It's Ma. What do you think? Send her up. It'll be nice to see you. Sure, nice for you. You're going out. <laughs> I guess you better send her up. I can't find her. Uh, never mind, she found us. Oh, Rhoda, I'm so glad I caught you before you left for the airport. You sounded so sad on the phone last night. I knew there had to be something wrong. You're not usually that sad when you say goodbye to me. <laughs> well, I'm not sad anymore, because I'm staying another week in New York. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. Well, maybe we can get together again, uh -huh. then. Twice would be nice. <laughs> Good luck. Sure, we'll do it. When? Oh, Ma, let's just leave it loose, huh? I mean, we'll set it up later, I promise. I'm, I'm kind of late right now. I'm sort of in a hurry. There's someone I gotta see. Bye. Uh, it's nice having her here. Who's she seeing? A friend. Not that guy with a funny name, is it? Joe? Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> it's not good for her to see the same man night after night after night. What about you and Dan? It's not good. <laughs> she should be seeing other people. Oh, Ma. You complain when she's seeing one guy. You complain when she's seeing a lot of guys. You complain when she's not seeing any guys. There's just no pleasing you. Why are you talking to me like this? <laughs> Like what? Like we were 
equal. <laughs> you don't listen to me the way you used to. It's these two weeks with Rhoda being here that's doing it, isn't it? Oh, Ma. I left the Bronx at dawn to come down and pay a visit. Having to get past the derelicts in the subway, in the streets. Not to mention your doorman. <laughs> Ma, it's not gonna work. You're not gonna make me feel guilty anymore just because you came over here. No more. <laughs> All right. What if I said I'm leaving now because I have a daughter that I loved and sacrificed for all my life <laughs> who doesn't want to see her mother. <laughs> that would do it. <laughs> hey! What the hell are you doing here? Oh, but why? I mean, why aren't you in Minneapolis? Oh. I said goodbye to you last night. Boy, did you ever. <laughs> so, this morning, I called in sick. What did you give her? <laughs> oh, uh... uh <laughs> this is uh, Rhoda, the nice lady I was telling you about. Uh, this is Nolan Arthur, my partner. Oh. He taught me everything I know. Nice to meet you. I didn't know who to thank. <laughs> So, uh, how long are you gonna stay? Oh, another week, Joe. We can be together all week. Isn't that great? Well, not really. I'm going out of town tonight on a job. Oh, well, then I'll see you tomorrow. No, I'm gonna be out of town till Friday. Friday? Now, wait. That, that, that only gives us one night before I have to leave. I can't help it. It's work. But I got out of my work to be with you. See, last night you said you wished I wasn't leaving, and now I'm not leaving. So, uh, couldn't you take off a couple of days? I mean... Call your boss. Tell him you're sick. Who am I going to call? Me? <laughs> Come on, I can't do that. I got responsibilities. Oh, boy. Hm, I risked my job for a Friday. That's terrific. Hey, I'm sorry, terrific. Rhoda, but I'm not going to let you manipulate me into feeling guilty about working just because you're being possessive. Holy smoke. Manipulate? Guilty and possessive all in the same sentence? <laughs> the grand slam. <laughs> Forget Friday. Hey. Yeah, I suddenly got homesick here. Where you going? Nice to meet you, sir. Hey, come nice on. Nice manipulating you. Hey. What's wrong with you? So that's it. The end of an almost perfect vacation. Gee, I really feel bad about you leaving. I know, I can tell. <laughs> What are you eating? I don't know. <laughs> That's how depressed I am. What is it? Some kind of pie. Ah, <laughs> oh, Brenda. Listen, we gotta face it. I mean, this, this trip was bound to come to an end sooner or later. I know, but what about Joe and you and, and you and me? Rhoda, you made me feel like a person for the first time. Oh, Brenda. I don't want to get you upset. I'm not upset. You got another fork for that? <laughs> hmm. You know what? What? This is beef pot pie. <laughs> I'm a mode. I know. Brenda, listen. We could both sit here and eat until we're, we're a couple of uh, sumo wrestlers. Right? <laughs> that's not, not going to accomplish a thing. That's Ma to take me to the airport. Okay. 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 I don't have time for a long fight. I'll just make this short. What's the matter with you? That's it, huh? I'm parking the tollway zone. Well, I'll make it short, too, because I'm catching a plane. What's the matter with you? Look, um, I can see you guys want to chat, so I'll, I'll just leave. I, I can hear you, but I promise I won't listen. Joe, this isn't going to work. What isn't going to work? I don't know. Uh, Why not? I don't know. Why? I don't know. Oh, I don't think I'm going to have time for this. Oh, look. I drove here across town. I went through red lights. I almost sideswiped the bus. Just to tell you, I really don't know you yet, but if you leave town, I don't know. I'm going to go crazy. Wow. <laughs> At your office today. I was really hurt. When you said you couldn't see me, I figured it was because you didn't want to see me. Well, I'm tired of being hurt. I really 
don't like being hurt. Hey. And so... If you didn't need me, you wouldn't be hurt. If I didn't need you, I wouldn't be hurt. So, in a funny way, I'm kind of glad we're hurting each other. That's crazy. <laughs> I mean, that scares me when I hear that, Joe. Because I care about you more than any other man I, I, I have ever cared about in, in my life. And I, I'm afraid. I'm not getting enough of that back. Okay. Okay, I'll give you some of that back. You want to know how much I care? A minute ago, I looked out that window, and I saw them towing away my car, and I didn't say anything. That's how much I care. Wow! Rhoda, stay, please. Does that mean you're staying or your arm's tired? <laughs> Both. <laughs> you like me, huh? <laughs> <gasps> okay, Joe. Well, now that we're straight, I mean, we are straight, aren't we? Yeah, we're straight. Okay, I got something to tell you. Yeah? I lied about them towing away my car. <laughs>